Hello and welcome to another Robot Varnick uh, video. Today's video is about how to uh, diagnose and repair a Speed Queen model SDG uh, gas fired dryer. Uh, a lot of these Speed Queen uh, dryers have been made the same way for many years, so a lot of the, the mechanical and electrical parts are pretty much the same for many models since they were. Uh, first manufactured so this video might be useful for many different model of Speed Queen commercial dryers this is a simple Speed Queen uh, coin operated dryer mostly found in residential apartment buildings and multi-unit uh, buildings more commercial laundromats usually have the bigger uh, multi-pound dryers this is only a single load dryer the uh, coin laundries have uh, bigger, bigger dryers that have different, uh, different electronic uh, parts to them. But the basic principles are all the same. No matter how big the dryer it is, it still uh, turns the drum and dries the clothing inside. So, a good thing about this Speed Queen dryers is that a lot of the parts are right up front in the control panel here, so they're very easy to service. This Speed Queen dryer is about 20 years old and it's a, actually a good testament to the Speed Queen uh, dryer uh, company that they make a good product so it doesn't change very much over the years. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that the power has been disconnected so before you start working on an appliance make sure the, the it's not connected to live electricity. So never even think of taking it apart or opening it up with uh, unless it's been unplugged and there you make sure there's no power. So uh, the, let's see what's going on here. The complaint was that it's very hard to turn on and it takes a lot of pressure to start the thing. Once it gets running, uh, it runs normally, but the it's very hard to start. So there could be something wrong with the power button, but we won't know until we take it apart and see what's inside and uh, get to the bottom of the problem. So a good thing about the Speed Queen dryer is that they're made for servicing when there's long rows of them, so all the parts are easy to get at if they're a long line of them, so you can take these screws off. Of course, when you're taking something apart, make sure you have somewhere to put the screws so you don't lose the parts. You don't want to lose the parts and can't find them later. And if you're taking your dryer apart, you want to see if the schematic is inside. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, keep the schematic in there for someone else who does know what they're doing. You'll notice that the wires are coming out of from the the timer in here for the coin operated timer so it won't work unless you put coins in there so you want people to pay to use the dryer so let's take a look at the parts and right off you could see that the that the the housing for the switch is busted up Uh, just a reminder that that music you hear playing is public domain music. Uh, there, it's from over a hundred years ago, so it's public domain. Whoops, a part got away from me there. Alright, you can see how the power switch is busted up, so when you press on the power switch, the whole housing moves with the switch so that's probably the failure of the switch you can see how it was arcing when uh, as the switch was failing and it's darkening the plastic housing up there so this is the most likely cause why the machine was hard to start and it could be while you're watching this video too because your speed queen dryer is hard to start or that goes for any model really so let's uh, put a new power switch on here and see what happens. 
So let's take a closer look inside the switch and see why it failed. As you can see, as I mentioned before, the die cast metal housing uh, broke apart, causing the switch to fail. And you can see there's the two electrodes. It's a single pole momentary contact switch. So when you press down, it closes the connection to start the dryer. You can see the. See if you can see the electrodes in there. You can see how, as the switch was coming apart, the electrodes were shorting as the gap between the contacts became larger as the switch was failing. But the important thing here is you want to make sure the amperage of your replacement switch matches the replacement of the original so the switch is rated for well let's see one half horsepower at 15 amps 125 volts to 250 volts ac so your switch needs to be compatible with the original specification so you don't want to put like a small direct current switch for like it might be used for a car or an automotive, for example, the the power and amperage wouldn't be sufficient if switch would start melting under the current. So you want to keep it within manufacturer manufacture specification for the amperage and power. The switch I put in there is rated for 10 amps, but the dryer doesn't really generate that much for momentary contact. So you want to make sure your switch is compatible. So I'm going to replace the switch with a new power switch which has like what appears to be a 7 16th inch uh, diameter matching the old one. So you want to make sure the, the parts fit the same hole so you don't have to do much uh, reworking or dr extra drilling so you want to switch that uh, has the same uh, size of the holes to use a new power switch. The old uh, switch had a double nut here so you can adjust uh, how far the switch appears on the surface so you want to adjust the switch so it looks neat on the machine when it's put back in service. standard uh, quarter quarter inch uh, spade connection so put the out pieces back on and while you have the dryer open you look for and clean out any dust that might be in there or check the other electrical connections to make sure everything looks okay uh, check the ground connection to make sure it gets good ground. Do you want some being electrocuted on the dryer? Make sure everything is clean inside. Put it back together. Now before you go through the trouble of uh, putting the screws back in, uh, you might want to test it. Power has been put back on. And let's see if you see the in-use light is on when uh, power is put on and the coin slide has been activated, uh, starting up the timer. So when this button is pressed, it should start. And with the very slightest press of the button, the, the machine starts running. So that was obviously a problem because before the switch was replaced, it was very hard to start because it wasn't making good contact and uh, you could see that the housing was broken that used uh, like die cast metal here to make the switch so in a busy heavy use in environment like rental housing uh, people will be pressing real hard on the switch who knows vandals might even press it real hard just to break it and over time the switch the die cast metal will weaken and uh, fall apart like this one. Now, 
you might want to some, some people might want to try to fix this with glue or something but uh, since robot varnish is all about recycling and uh, making the most of what you've got let's say you wanted to f actually uh, go ahead and fix this switch say it's the only one you could find and you couldn't find you don't have a storehouse of electronic parts like robot varnish who comes from another planet who has all kinds of parts on hand for its robot needs let's you're an ordinary uh, human living on earth and you don't have uh, that much electronics so you 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 might want to try to fix the old switch so the first thing you want to do is clean the electrodes in the switch so it makes good contact so start by cleaning try to clean off the the burned up the, the soot from the electrodes uh, arcing on the contact so you want to see if there's a good electrode and for the contacts left so after cleaning it up it looks actually looks okay this the switch would actually still work if it's repaired but of course if the electrodes were completely burned away uh, then you would have to get a replacement so let's actually uh, go through the process and actually uh, fix the switch to give it new life You'll need some uh, good uh, epoxy glue. Clean the parts of the switch. And make sure yeah, the switch is actually still usable. There's still springiness. There's still springiness in the switch, so the mechanism will still work. So you want to make sure that all the parts are clean taking a piece of sandpaper or emery cloth whichever and clean the surfaces so the epoxy glue gets a good grip on the pieces you don't want to you don't want any glue to get inside the switch housing so you want to clean only on the outside but you want the glue to get a good grip so clean the surfaces of the switch so the glue gets a good grip because when it was originally manufactured they crimped the sides of the switch to hold it together but those it's all cracked now so you have to rely on the plastic housing to hold the glue to hold the switch together again and you don't want to get glue in the switch housing causing trouble with the movement of the switch Use a good quality epoxy glue. Something that'll stand up to the heat. It gets about at least a hundred degrees in there. Because after you put the glue on, you could use some tape to hold it temporary, glue it together temporarily, so you hold it together. So you want to have some tape on hand too. So start by mixing a little batch of epoxy glue. Follow manufacturer instructions for the glue. Mix it up real good according to manufacturer instructions. You want to switch to hold together, you want the epoxy turning to goo and falling apart again. Also follow manufacturer instructions for chemical safety. Some uh, brands might say you should be wearing gloves and for this. So carefully apply the, the glue to the edges of the switch, making sure not to get any glue inside the switch compartment itself where it can ooze onto the electric contacts. You want the contacts to move as they are originally designed. I uh, might also want to put like uh, some like metal uh, 
we'll use some uh, metal bailing wire to hold it together so it'll be actually held together with some bailing wire while the glue dries. Also, oh, let's put some glue on the inside edges of the contact, to the housing. So you wipe it all off once uh, you're done slopping the glue on everything. You don't want to put any glue on to the where the switch is moving because you don't want to glue the switch shut so don't put the glue where the switch the button will be moving and in fact avoid that area So we'll get some uh, bailing wire. Yes, folks, this can be held together with glue and bailing wire. So as you can see, the switches held together with glue and bailing wire until the epoxy glue dries then you could take the wire off so while the glue is drying put more glue on there put it in the crimped area As long as it works, folks, that's what counts. They want to get the switch back in service. If you don't have a replacement, you can fix it yourself at home the robot Varnick way. Be able to repair your own stuff and not have to uh, pay for who knows what they charge for. Uh, if you know what a new switch costs, let me know in the comments. If other people would be curious too. To, see how much uh, they charge for a replacement switch for a Speed Queen model SDG clothes dryer. It's probably the same switch for gas or electric. I'm just going to put it in there everywhere so just use wire cutters to cut the bailing wire or if you could use leave the bailing wire there without interfering with the electrodes you could leave it there or cut it away when the glue dries after it does its purpose of holding the switch together while the glue dries while the glue is drying you want the glue to uh, settle down along the walls of the of the housing you don't want it to get on the electrode like if you leave it like this the glue might ooze down and go towards the electrode so use a spring clamp to keep the switch vertical while the epoxy glue dries to keep the switch vertical folks so the glue dries properly and so it won't interfere with the electrode so the, as the glue dries so put that in a safe place where no one can uh, disturb it until the epoxy dries. For those of you who want to see an antique iron collection in this laundry room, you might have seen these irons in the background of the video, so here's a closer look. Goes from new to old, from the oldest uh, iron to the newest. Now the dryers appear to be running okay. That, that concludes this robot Varnick video of how to fix things. The last thing to do is to put the screws back in. Like I said, these Speed Queen dryers are very easy to service. 
so they're very well known for their reliability and dependability. And it's back in service. If you have an appliance question, let me know in the comments. I might be able to do a demonstration for you if uh, the appliance is on hand. So let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share your comments. What do you think of this video? What do you think of this uh, cheap power switch that you used? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And, and share your comments. So this is the end for now. See you next time. Goodbye.